Hello, good afternoon. I'm writer coach Tony and welcome back to another uh, talk about research work, research writing. And um, this afternoon, I'm going to talk about uh, sampling, no? sampling in research writing. So why do we need to have a sample? Uh, because normally when you do research, you have a population. So you're doing a research on something and your population is the is everyone that is include that can be a possible respondent in your study. Now, for example, you want to research about study habits on grade four students in Metro Manila. So your population is all the grade four students in Metro Manila. Uh, but of course, Metro Manila has 13 cities plus many towns. So it's physically impossible to, to interview everyone, to survey all the students. So that's why you need a sample. And that's why today we're going to discuss uh, about the different types of sampling. Because um, uh, a viewer asked me what is um, stratified sampling simple sampling and simple stratified sampling um, well there are different kinds of sampling i'm only going to discuss those i have i have seen my students use so at least with those um, uh, i know why they used it um, the most common and the one that i would um, i would want you to really use is random sampling okay random sampling is just um, picking uh, randomly the respondent is going to answer your your survey questionnaire or your interview uh, but it's easier said than done because for example if you go back to your previous um, example when I said all the grade 4 students of Metro Manila it would be impossible to do random sampling because you have to list out all the names and then you have to choose usually the computer does the choosing randomly and of course it's physically impossible to go from this place to that place so if you're doing that type although the idea of random sampling is good you can do it in a on a smaller scale okay so another sampling is systematic sampling um, it's also like random sampling but you choose a certain number let's say you want all odd numbers so all the names are listed you only pick the ones who are in the odd number or you pick every tenth person so 1 10 20 30 40 50 so it really depends on you actually you have a you have a sample list and you just choose um, the ones that that uh, you decide on if you want systematic sampling Okay, why do you need to do th these samplings randomly? Um, I remember a student asked me, why, why do you have to do random sampling? Uh, para walang daya, no? There's no cheating. For example, um, if your school, uh, let's say there's a national test for uh, student performance in the Philippines. If a school only sends their most intelligent students, it does not show the real picture of academic achievement. Uh, diba? If you only choose the most smart students to take a national achievement test, it will not show the true performance of Filipinos. So logically, you, if you're a, a school with ethics, you will send a mixed group, a random sampling of your students from the most intelligent to to the you know the bottom parts of the class no so you you, you choose randomly and make sure the sampling is good it's, it's random and it's not skewed to a certain hindi lahat 60% matalino hindi naman lahat 60% bobo you know uh, i mean you know uh, academically weak so what you want to send is a random sample of students from your school so that when the National Achievement Test is released, the results are released, you will really know how your school performed. Hindi lang yung 
uh, the school performed well because everyone who took their the exam were top 10 or top 20. It does not tell the whole picture. That's why you really, really need to do random sampling. That's why you really have to sample your your respondents so that your study, whatever the results are, will not be in favor of a certain result. In other words, hindi siya lutong Macau no? in, 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 in our language. No? Because otherwise, if you only choose the most intelligent students, parang lutong Macau. So, nag-study ka pa. You just wasted your time. Um, and it wastes, it doesn't do anything to research. Uh, you're, you're researching because you want to contribute something to society. Diba? So, you want the most unbiased sample that you want. So, anyway, we discussed random sampling, systematic sampling. Um, in my case, since many of my students are very busy, um, they use snowball sampling. I think that's the same as convenient sampling. It's a bit something medyo ano sa, sa ethics. No? Kasi in snowball sampling, what they do is um, I ask a person, a friend of mine, to answer my, my survey questionnaire. And I ask that person to refer me to a friend of his or hers that uh, fits closely his or her profile, no? So it's like ref it's like a referral sampling. So um, that can be bad because, uh, diba, there's a saying, uh, tell me who your friends are, uh, tell me who you are, or birds of the same family flock together. So if you just depend solely on the friends of that of that person, uh, the results of the study might not be very, be very, you know, va uh, validated, hindi siya, hindi siya truthful, because you're only sampling towards a certain characteristic. But if you do that, let's say if you have 10 friends of different uh, characteristics, maybe that could help. But otherwise, I still allow my students to use that, especially if they're choosing groups which are highly selective. No? For example, nurses lang ang pwedeng respondents or college educated lang or students coming from a certain social stratum. So with that, I allow them to use snowball sampling because it's not, it's not so... Uh, the characteristics you need are so specific to a certain skill. For example, you just need people who know how to program and not everyone naman knows how to do programming. So that's why you need to do snowball sampling so that you get to... It's usually done for studies which um, the characteristics of the respondents are so specific to a certain skill. No? Uh, for example, dapat nurses lang. No? Dapat um, yung marunong lang mag-program. So the skill set is so specific that uh, doing it randomly um, you don't have to do it randomly. Pwede na snowball sampling. Snowball sampling kasi, snowball sampling, um, is easier because uh, it's easier to refer friends eh, to answer your your survey questionnaire. So, medyo mabili siya gawin as compared to do actual random sampling where you have to go to different places because the reality is we don't really have that much time. Even if you do it online, like what most of my students do now, they do it online, the tendency is, even online, you only catch people who also have access to online uh, internet. And uh, usually, they would belong to a certain social strata. No? Um, so make sure your study, the respondents, also fit uh, the social strata you want to, you want to target. No? For example, if you want to target nurses, most likely nurses, since they are professionals, they have access to the internet. But let's say if you're targeting single mothers um, from the poor sector, no, malabu yun. You do, you ha, I think you have to do uh, actual legwork. I mean, ikaw talaga pupunta doon sa mga lugar where they are because um, I don't think having internet would be the priority for most single mothers with uh, young children. No? They'd, they'd have other priorities so they won't be spending on monthly internet. So, I hope you get what I mean. Um, I made an example a while ago about uh, grade 4 students 
all grade four, uh, the population is all grade four, four students in Metro Manila. Uh, you can use cluster sampling. Uh, for example, if you teach in a high school in in let's say Manila, so a cluster sampling muna lang, no? So my my sample would be all the grade four students from uh, this school from Don to Bursho High School of Manila. So that's cluster sampling because you're doing it geographically because that's the most feasible for you uh, as a researcher. Diba? Um, why would you do research in Alabang if you live in Quezon City? Diba? Parang katangahan lang, no? uh, the reality is you have to finish this, this research within one year. So you have to work on an, where it's most feasible for you and most advisors and teachers will allow it naman. No? Um, they will allow you to do studies within your area um, because that is the most convenient for you as long as they meet certain research standards like dapat random sampling again because even when you do cluster sampling um, if the population is still big let's say all grade 4 students in your high, in your school is like 3,000 students uh, you can still do uh, random sampling mamili ka na lang dun, uh, let's say 300 students no? but of course if it's a really small school uh, it would be good if you choose other schools as well so it will really depend on you um, there's also stratified sampling um, so my uh, one of my one of my uh, subscribers asked what's the difference between simple random sampling and simple stratified sampling in random sampling the population is much much bigger but for stratified sampling, as I said, pwede ang grade for students lang, pwede ang grade for students of a certain school lang. So, you group them, uh, nag-group na sila into a much smaller group, and then that's when you do the random sampling. Kasi random sampling naman can be done on big groups or smaller groups, no? So, and I still, even if the group is small, when I say small, maybe a thousand respondents, I still... Uh, want the sampling to be random uh, as opposed to snowball sampling because uh, the results would be more interesting because um, it would really show the the real um, uh, to really answer your statement of the problem as opposed to just focusing on snowball sampling but anyway I've allowed snowball sampling on many many, many studies of my students uh, because of the time the time element and of course because of the type of study that they did no? the skill set that they they that the respondents had to have because no? uh, they don't very specific you know, skill sets for example they have to be ER nurses or some of them have to have like teachers with master's degree so it's a very you know small group of, of people so usually you just refer someone you know uh, who have those specific set skills okay otherwise if you just want to interview consumers between the age of 20 to 34 male female ayun you can do you can really do random sampling you, know, you can just go to uh, I, I've had I've had students to go to 7-eleven and then they just you know interview people along the road along the way you know um, that's also good because that's really random sampling so again um, you need to sample because you cannot interview everyone. You cannot interview everyone in the population. Um, then I suggest that you do random sampling so that your results will not be tainted. And when you present it to the to the world, uh, it would look more credible as opposed to a, a study na mukhang lutong makaw. No? Um, in that way, it would also strengthen your research skills because. This, this, doing this thesis uh, research is just a step towards, you know, more research in the future just in case uh, you're going to a field where you have to do more research. Uh, so with that, I, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. My numbers are below. I have my WhatsApp. I have my um, Viber and my email. Uh, don't be shy. Just contact me. If you have any questions feel free to um, ask me and please please subscribe to my channel it's writer coach Tony 
just click it there um, and hope to see you in my other videos uh, and hope you learn more about research writing. Ingat po kayo lahat. Uh, keep safe.